Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Lee with another episode of Derm Path Made Easy. And today we're going to be talking about cutaneous lymphadenomas. It seems like most of you guys got the correct answer on the unknown. So awesome job, guys. So cutaneous lymphadenoma, this is an entity that has gone through quite a bit of criticism. Uh, and, you know, mainly in the debate about the histiogenesis, what cell of origin these tumors are from. Um, so, you know, originally they were thought to be sort of uh, pilosebaceous derivative uh, due to the presence of some of these cells, you know, you'll see in a bit. They sort of look like sebocytes that are within there. And also some, sometimes you have connection to the uh, follicular structures like you see here uh, on our case and as well as here. So, and then it went through a transition to some, some individuals thought that it was postulated to be a part of the sweat, glut, uh, sweat duct differentiation, you know, sort of due to the presence of duct-like structures within the tumor lobules. And that's kind of how I constructed the unknown, um, the answer choices, just because, you know, it, depending on what area you look, you may see differentiation towards those structures. But right now, I believe we believe that this is more pilar der derivative given the immunohistochemical profile, which we will discuss. Um, and many consider this as a variant of a trichoblastoma. Um, so trichoblastomas are the, sort of the daddy of both um, trichoepithelioma and cutaneous lymph lymphadenoma. And that's, that's the basis of uh, what our understanding is right now. So let's take a look at what these lesions look like clinically. There, there are not that many clinical pictures of this lesion because it is a more rare lesion. And oftentimes they, they appear just like this with this red kind of raised bumpy lesion, cholangiectatic papule, usually about up to a, a centimeter in diameter, uh, which is just about what we see here, a little bit less than a centimeter. And oftentimes they are biopsied to rule out basal cell carcinoma or even sebaceous, hyper, uh, sebaceous hyperplasia depending on whether or not you know, it's super red just like this. Let's come back to our case. And as you can see from low power, the, the most obvious thing to see is that this thing is a lifted nodule. It is, where's my pointer? Uh, lifted nodule, um, it's, it's usually on the head and neck of older individuals, 40 to 50, but they can really occur at any age, anywhere from, you, you can, I, I've heard of cases of this presenting in you know, very young children all the way until, you know, the end of life. I keep on losing my pointer. Oh, there we go. Okay, so lifted papule or nodule, and you have this infiltration of these clear cells, clear islands and lobules or tumor cells. In this case, it's extending quite deep uh, to the base of the biopsy. With, like, over in areas here, you see sort of some kind of infiltrated row patterns, definitely concerning for a malignant tumor. So let's come to higher power and consistently you can see this, these tumor lobules have this blue rim of cells along the outside, right? Blue rim of cells very similar to a basal cell, basal cell carcinoma or even a trichoepithelioma. You know, there is no clefting like you would see in a basal cell carcinoma. And, you know, if you look at the cells, they're not particularly peripheral palisading, but although it, it can be that way. The diagnostic feature of this tumor um, can be said like this. You have these large, almost histiocytoid, large vesicular uh, nuclei. <clears throat> Sorry, vesicular chromatin within these nuclei. And remember, vesicular, what that means is essentially you, it, the cell is almost translucent. The, the chromatin pattern is dispersed along the outside of the cell. So, so you can see that dusting along the periphery of the cell. So the central portion of the nuclei look um, clear. Oftentimes these tumors can also have these prominent nucleoli. And another helpful feature here is the spattering of lymphoid cells, these little black dots in here. These are an admixture of T and B lymphocytes with the predominance of T cells. So let's scan around here. As you can see, very, very similar kind of pattern everywhere, everywhere you look. O oftentimes we do have in parts here uh, there is sort of an infiltrative growth pattern and in parts almost like ductal like structures right here is sort of like a Like a tadpole like area and here you have sort of you know ductal like appearance to this this cluster here So you can see the debated histiogenesis 
and you know some SIBO site looking stuff out here and it's it's been pretty confusing the main differential diagnosis here which we'll discuss in a second that we have to rule out against is lymphoepithelial carcinoma which can look quite similar to this and we'll discuss the differences later this tumor should have no mitotic figures, and you can often see this very dense fibrocollagenous stroma uh, within this tumor. Um, okay. So just like in trichoepitheliomas, remember trichoepithelioma, this, this tumor again is a supposedly a derivative of a uh, trichoblastoma. And remember trichoblastomas are uh, differentiate into the trichoepithelioma as well as this. At least that's what some people believe. So, um, trichoepitheliomas will be will have Merkel cells, and they will be BCL2 positive along the periphery, unlike basal cell carcinomas. Right? Basal cell carcinomas will not have Merkel cells and will not have BCL2 around the periphery. It'll be BCL2 positive along the whole tumor island. It's the same exact pattern here. BCL2 will label the periphery of this tumor but be negative in the middle. And CK20 positive Merkel cells will also be found in this tumor, but be negative in malignant tumors like basal cell carcinoma. Um, one other, so no mitotic figures, we've talked about that. And if you throw a CEA on this tumor, which you would expect to be positive if these, if these uh, duct-like structures were indeed, um, you know, of true ductal differentiation, they would be CEA positive, but they aren't. These ductal structures, these luminal structures here, are going to be positive for EMA, but not CEA, differentiating this from a true ductal tumor and differentiating this from one of the answer choices, a clear cell dermal duct tumor. Okay, let's look at another example. Here is another example, and again, this slide and the other following examples I'm showing you from is from Path Presenter. They have an amazing website uh, with on all these materials here are free. I would definitely suggest for you to sign up for a free account and take a look at the slide library because they have so many cases. And you know, for those who don't have access to these cases, it's a great way to learn. So again, from low power infiltrative basaloid tumor, uh, and you do see some focal kind of clear cell differentiation. Oftentimes these lesions can actually be pretty well circumscribed, but if you just get a superficial biopsy like this, you know, you'd certainly be concerned for malignancy. So we come to higher power, and again, this one's a little bit harder to see, but uh, first thing that's obvious is you have a bunch of uh, lymphocytes, these darker cells within here, as well as some of these like cells with very, very large nuclei, and you can see that vesicular chromatin pattern where the chromatin is dispersed around the periphery, um, and a, usually a pretty prominent nucleoli. <clears throat> so typically you'd want to throw on CK20, which will be, which will show Merkel cells within here, as well as, um, you know, a per, uh, sorry, a BCL2, which will label the periphery. That would help you differentiate this. And a CEA, just making sure that it's not like a, a ductal tumor. Okay, let's look around some more. Very, very similar kind of case here. This one actually has quite a bit more of a, almost like a, a ductal different, differentiated tumor. You know, but again, CA negative within those ductal islands. Okay, here's another example from Path Presenter. Similar kind of picture. This one has quite a bit more, uh, you know, sort of clear cell differentiation. And even over here, it's it's like almost like comedonecrosis-like areas. But clear uh, vesicular nuclei, prominent um, nucleoli, spattering of T and B lymphocytes without any mitotic figures. Okay, and uh, let's look at one more case here, very similar kind of picture. Cleared out cells, a bunch of lymphocytes within their uh, vesicular pattern nuclei, um, and a basaloid rim around the periphery. It's embedded in a fibrocollagenous stroma, as you can see here, and in areas you can see that it, it looks pretty infiltrative. So I have one other case to show you, and this helps us differentiate this tumor from this one, which is lymphoepithelial carcinoma. The first most distinctive thing about this tumor is that you can see that there are basically a dual cell population here. You have some clear cells and then a bunch of other blue dark stuff. And notice how the blue dark stuff almost 
directly correlates with the pinker, lighter stuff. Okay, so that's an important diagnostic feature. And if you look at this lesion as a, from a whole, from low power, you will see that it directly correlates lymphocytes and epithelial cells that basically correlate directly within each other. So let's come to higher power. And what can we see here? These nuclei are far more atypical, right? These nuclei are massive. You have a lot of pleomorphism here, some really large nuclei. It's not this sort of open chromatin. It's more stippled right? Little chunks and dots everywhere. Very prominent nuclei, and uh, if we spend some time, I'm sure we're going to see a bunch of mitotic figures. So here, you know, obviously very irregular nuclei, very, you know, the nuclear contours are very, very irregular. You do have a couple of cells here that have completely vesicular nuclei, but the degree of pleomorphism here is, is far, far greater. And this one is to be confused with lesions like the EBV associated, you know, um, lesions in the nasopharynx. And here, if you look here, just from low power, you can see that these cells are overall far bluer and the pleomorphism here is great. Uh, here you got a massive irregular cell, you know, another cell that's a little bit smaller. It's also very irregular as well as this vesicular pattern chromatin. And as I come out, you can see that the lymphocytes are almost directly associated with these tumor areas. Here's some single tumor cells. You know, this is almost like a Reed Sternberg-like owl eyes that are staring at you. Let's look back at this tumor, our tumor actually. And you can see that it's quite different. You know, these cells are almost, the, the, the actual tumor cells, the, the ones that have this vesicular pattern nuclei, are almost very similar in shape and size. They're all round. There's no kind of like bubbling out many of the nuclei. So that's as opposed to this one where the cells are much bluer, right? So this is lymphoepithelial carcinoma, probably the main, main thing to be confused with uh, for cutaneous lymphadenoma. If this case has been helpful and you like this, please like, uh, you know, hit that like button, turn on notifications. I basically post things four days a week. I know how they can be annoying, but um, it, it would help grow this channel. So, uh, and also share it with people that you think this would help. Thanks a lot, guys. Until next time.